Rebecca. Hi. 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 <laughs> Thank you for coming out and welcome wine snobs to another wine snob calendar episode. And mm-hmm. today we are going to talk about Marcelon Day. Yes. Marcelon. Marcelon. <laughs> it wasn't until I got into trying to put um, this calendar together that I learned that Marcelon was an actual varietal. Yes. Which is crazy. Have you ever heard of it? No, I haven't. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about it, so. <laughs> well, I don't either, so this is a first for us. And I could only find one wine. <laughs> I searched high and low for Marcelon. I couldn't find except there was one on wine.com and <laughs> here it is. You bought the last one too. It feels that way because yeah. shortly after it was out. You know, it may, I'm curious to, to know who's buying Marcelon. <laughs> you are, and that's oh, yeah. it. <laughs> There's not much. It wasn't, was it in the wine Bible? No, it wasn't. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I was doing a quick look up, you know, as I do before every show, like, especially when I don't know the varietal. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, kind of, it's a bit humbling. <laughs> so I find out, hey, wine snob, you don't know this varietal. I'm like, oh. So, yeah, I looked up in the wine Bible. We were looking in there, and... It, there's no more there. Yeah. Um, I wonder if the updated version has it, but still, that's pretty profound. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's that it gets pretty obscure out there. Um, so I did a quick Google um, on Marcelon, and it says Marcelon is a red French wine grape variety that is a cross between Cabernet Sauvignon and Grenache. It was first bred in 1961 by Paul Truel near the French town of Marseillan. The vine is grown mostly in the Languedoc wine region with some plantings in the northern coast of California. Interesting. Yes. I'm still yet to find a Marcelin from California. <laughs> we should just try it. Yes. <laughs> She's ready to go. Let's go, yeah. Um, origin French, uh, Marseillan. Um, sweetness of resulting wine is dry. So it shouldn't be too fruity, mm-hmm. I think. And uh, wine color red, of course. And uh, notable region is languedoc Roussillon. Um, also says notable regions are China, Rhone wine region, Languedoc, and California. And this one is by uh, Garzon. Garzon. And um, Marcelin Reserva, 2018. And it's uh, a winemaker in Uruguay. Yes, Uruguay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know where Uruguay is? Um, is that somewhere like in the Pacific? Just kidding. <laughs> South America. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes I do. <laughs> um, ready to dive in? Yeah. So, um, so red or white wines, you have, what's your preference? When it's hot out? Yeah. <laughs> Like, As it is right now yeah. <laughs> in Sacramento, I would like to drink white wines. Yeah. Yes. Um, so let's talk a little bit about you. Okay, sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Rebecca, you are a realtor. Yes, I am a realtor out in Sacramento and Placer counties. Oh, nice. And um, on my spare time, I like to drink wine. <laughs> Um, Rebecca is also like my first guest off Instagram. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I was like, oh, should I go to his house? I don't know, <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, but I was like, it's okay. Thank you for coming like, he out. He has other shows, so it's <laughs> fine. Thank you for coming out of your comfort mm-hmm. zone. I appreciate it. This is also the first time I'm meeting Rebecca in person. We've chatted yes. for probably over the last year. Um, back and forth on various topics, especially wine. And uh, but coincidentally, my first encounter, our first encounter, is also our first encounter with with Marcia, wine, yeah, with wine, with wine and itself, with this grape yes. itself. <laughs> so that's awesome. There's a lot of firsts here. Uh, hopefully, to many more. I'm gonna decant a little bit here in my fun little decanter. What's, how long do you leave it out for? Like, what's a good time estimate to let, let it breathe? That's a good question. It depends on the wine and mm-hmm. the varietal. Uh, some wines are made ready to drink. Okay. You know, they're more approachable straight out of the bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, 
generally speaking, especially if they're aged, um, if they're older, if they're older, mm -hmm. um, maybe they could benefit from some opening up. But it's also how the winemaker made them. Okay. So I I try to make notes by winemaker and mm -hmm. by vintage. Um, so you know some winemakers will make a a Grenache that's ready to go right now, mm -hmm. and it doesn't really change as it opens up over the course of the evening. Whereas others will make like a you know massive Syrah uh -huh. or Petite Syrah that needs to air out. Okay. So either way, it's fun to open it and then follow its progression over the course of the evening or so. Because that's happened before where I open a bottle of wine and then it's not so good. Yeah. And I put it back in the fridge. I don't know if I'm supposed to, but yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I put it back in the fridge. Yeah. Um, and a day and a half later, it's amazing. Yes. Yeah. 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 The, all the fridge did was it slowed down the decanting process. Okay. So that oxygenation, it just slowed it down and kept it tight. Mm -hmm. So it's also another way to preserve the wine. It's one of the ways I preserve my wines if I, you know, because I can't finish the whole bottle every time I do it. I was wondering yeah. about that. All your <laughs> reviews. I'm like, does he polish off the whole bottle? Oof. Yeah. Yeah. That is, sometimes it can get heavy. So yes. um, a lot of times if the wine is a pretty big wine, mm -hmm. you know, high alcohol and such, um, I'll probably make it a third or halfway through. And then I'll just, you know, use a vacuum vent or something and just uh -huh. put it in the fridge. And it'll keep for a week or so. Okay. And I'll come back to it later or something. Yeah. Um, so if you if you look at my posts, they're usually several days apart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. Can I open one every night. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Marseillan, it'd be interesting to see um, what this is like. And on the nose, it's just that plum. Okay. Very, very typical of a cab. Yes. There's just a hint of leather in there, like a wet wood, but the fruit is definitely up front. Some minerality as well mm -hmm. in the back. You see me, I'm just nodding. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're a good sport. <laughs> I'm like, whatever you say, sure. Well, like we talked about earlier, um, we're going to do an exercise yes. um, after this uh, where we'll look at um, earth mm -hmm. um, versus dirt versus mineral minerality. So, like, a to tell the wood. difference between the two, yeah. Right. Um, to kind of like, uh, make that connection with your mm -hmm. palate. We'll dive in. Mm. It's sweet for me. Like yeah, it's a it's sweeter. Fruit forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is fruit forward. Um, I think it. It's more cab than anything. It's more cab than a Grenache. You know, when I think of. So, a, what are the tasting notes for a typical Grenache like? What do you get? Typical Grenache, um, they're, they're more uh, terroir driven. So uh -huh. the, they're also a lighter. They tend to be a little more lighter in their expression. So think on the lighter end of the spectrum as far as reds go, there's a Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. So like a very delicate yes. Burgundian style Pinot. And then on the heavier end, you have like a Petit Syrah mm -hmm. or you know, a Barolo. Um, I think Grenache is closer to the Pinot side of the scale. and. Um, that allows more of the terroir to come through. And I think the vine itself pulls a lot of the terroir into the, the grapes. Um, so you get a lot more of that nuance. Mm -hmm. You might also get a little brighter expression, so it's slightly more acidic. Um, you know, you get a little more bright berries mm -hmm. and such, whereas this you get more plum. Okay. And that's very typical of, of a cab, um, which it looks like in that crossbreeding between Grenache and Cab. Mm -hmm. It looks like the Cab one out on this one. Yes. <laughs> At least for this one. It's just stronger. Yeah. yeah. I think the way the terroir comes through on this one is actually fairly reminiscent of a Grenache. Mm -hmm. It's just really pushed back um, because of the fruit expression. That plum on the front dominates it. Mm -hmm. If this was a Grenache, you would pick up more of that leather and that mineral on the back. Okay. And the color, it's pretty Yeah, the color intense. Is, yeah, it's pretty dark. Um, pretty opaque, actually. Um, that definitely screams cab. Um, like, 
like a slightly earthy cab. Slightly mineral. It's not bad. Mm -mm. It's good. Um, a little fruit forward. Not so much so, you know, like say a Merlot or like a Zin. Mm -hmm. A typical Zin from out here. Yeah, Zins have been very... Yeah. Like, it is very fruity. Yes, especially where like we are. Like, almost too much. Yeah, in yeah. this region, it's it's not hard to run into a very overbearing zin that's just heavy on the fruit and mm -hmm. the raisin expression, which mm -hmm. is kind of unique to where the way the fruit espresso in zin. And then the pepper. And um, if you go up to, like, say, Amador, yeah. or, you know, El Dorado Hills, the foothills there, um, you find a lot of those big, jammy, peppery zins. And it wasn't until recently that I started finding, um, noticing a little more mature, restrained, you mm -hmm. know, Zen styles. And I think it's just the evolution of the winemaking industry there. It's still relatively nascent, say, compared to um, Napa and such, yeah. and all the established regions. And so we're seeing a lot more mature, refined, nuanced styles mm -hmm. coming out with the Zins. Um, this would be good with, like, really old gouda cheese Ooh. yeah gouda or like a big ribeye likes yeah I like, I like to eat <laughs> <laughs> yes but that's how i got started drinking wine is is through eating and just pairing it with interesting food. Mm -hmm. yeah my pairing started the other way i started drinking wine but i never combined it with eating i love eating too i yes. love food but and so I think that's kind of still held on because I don't really care to pair that much. Mm -hmm. But then when I do, when I pair, when I find really good pairings, um, oh, it just hits and yes. rings. Mm. Maybe on our next one, you can be in yes. charge of cheese. I can pick the food and then <laughs> you pick the wine, yeah. <laughs> wow. It'll be interesting to see how it opens up, but I don't think um, it's going to change that much. I can and see and vision much because it's fairly round on the body. Is it because, so? Are you looking for when the flavors are already like coming out? That's when you know that it doesn't need to be opened up. Typically, um, when the expression is already this relaxed, mm -hmm. so it's not it's not necessarily tight. Yeah, and it's like, you know it doesn't come across as very tight and and um, I don't know how to describe it a stringent pent up. Um, that usually means it's going to probably not change much over time. Um, it's ready to go right now. Maybe an hour from now, you may pick up some other essence, mm -hmm. you know, but it'll be a very subtle nuance, maybe a tertiary note, you know, some interesting characteristic from the terroir or from the vines. Okay. Or, you know, from the barrels uh, or the winemaking process. But I think by and large, it's, it's going to remain this way. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see. I'll make note of it on the blog or later on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's really interesting. You know, I, I didn't know what to expect uh, opening Marcelin, and, you know, for the first time. But now reading the description of you know, Cab and uh, Grenache, it, it, it's now making sense. It makes sense, yeah. Yeah, I would say it's, it's, it's a Cab with a soft finish. That's not bad of, then, of yeah. A Grenache. yeah. Someone wants it a little bit. So if you're like, should I drink Pinot or Cab today? This is what you should drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, yeah. Like, I want something heavy, <laughs> but... Yeah, it would be like a Pinot Lover's Cab. <laughs> yes. Or a... It's not peppery on the back, mm -hmm. on the finish. It's not grippy. Um, it's pretty creamy, actually, just smooth on the finish there. Um, a little bit of warmth on the chest naturally it's a uh, 14.5 but for that most of the wines would be most of the varietals would be very peppery uh -huh. um, on the finish and have a spicy tingle on your lips but uh, this one's actually fairly tame and that's a lot more reminiscent of the Grenache I think that's where the Grenache comes in but the nose to the bot through the body is definitely cab mm -hmm. on the expression interesting and are you a cab person? Like, what? Are, what's your lately? What I, I know, we always change depending on yeah. on our mood. Yeah. <laughs> but overall, would you say what would you say is your go-to varietal? Hmm. Oh, between like cab or Just 
everything. Yeah. Everything. Um, you know, when given, um, when exploring a winemaker or a mm -hmm. region, especially a winemaker for the first time, um, if they have a Pinot, I'll go for that. Okay. And the reason is, the a Pinot is such an unforgiving grape. Mm -hmm. um, it's very true, it's very transparent. Um, you can't really hide any flaws in the vineyard nor in the winemaking process. So it has to be absolutely perfect and correct. So it's hard to, to make a good Pinot. So, right, and so if I look at a winemaker's Pinot, it tells me a lot about where they are in that journey and their mastery of the process and the, mm -hmm. the, the grapes. And if they're, if they're growers, even more so, um, if they take it start to finish, well, which is increasingly rare because Pinot, again, is all about terroir. So, you know, you may have a, a vineyard, but you may not be blessed with the right terroir uh -huh. for a Pinot. Um, so it's no reflection on the winemakers. It's sometimes they'll go to certain growers that have, you know, and, you know exceptional, that grow exceptional Pinot, mm -hmm. and then take it from there. Um, but I would say Pinot by default. Um, I like more terroir-driven grapes varietals. So uh, Grenache next comes up next. I think, you know, <laughs> a few other wine snobs and some other winemakers I've talked to kind of think of it. We all think of it as the the Pinot of the foothills uh, okay. because it's about the lightest varietal you find up in the foothills, but it's also very terroir driven, mm -hmm. and it offers enough transparency and clarity um, to reveal any flaws. Um, Can you name a couple of um vineyards that are worth visiting oh for Grenache yeah um, I recently did a segment with the winemaker at uh, Skinner Vineyards okay. and that's coming up soon on the channel uh, and he makes a really nice Grenache it's all the state right there mm -hmm. and you can taste that terroir coming mm -hmm. through I mean all their wines are terroir driven um, that's a great Grenache um, last week I did a barrel tasting with the winemaker at um, Windwalker. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. So he has a nice Grenache and uh, I brought a bottle back and I was going to do a review mm -hmm. with it. And, and so, but then in a split second, one of my other wine snobs stopped by and I said, Hey, let's look at this Grenache that, uh, you know, this winemaker Windwalker made, you know, let's, let's see what, what he's doing. And we opened it and we're both like, Oh. We should have saved that and did a review oh, on man. it. <laughs> so yeah, I hit him up and he was just like, "Yeah, we'll get you another one." Yeah. Um, so that's going to be coming. I think he makes a good Grenache too, mm -hmm. um, with a little bit more of an X Factor flair to it. You know, a little more of a you know. Uh, whereas the winemaker at uh, Skinner is coming from a Pinot winemaking background okay. in Oregon, so his Grenache style of Grenache is actually fairly reminiscent of, of a Pinot. Of a Pinot. So it's subtle, nuanced, and uh, you know, yeah, we'll have to open the bottle so we can explore that. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, there you have it, wine snobs. Yep. Have you ever had uh, um, Marcelin? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> and if you're looking to buy or sell a house, oh, talk to Rebecca. Yes. She's the person to talk to. It's crazy. Super cool. <laughs> Super cool person. Um, but yeah, let me know uh, if you have any favorite Marcelans, one that we should look at. I'd like to review more on the blog just to kind of... If they exist. Know, if they exist. Yes. Uh, they're supposed to be here in Northern California, but... <laughs> I don't know where. Maybe someone's backyard. I don't know. Yeah. It's got to be something really obscure. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to do like, you know, extreme Googling or something to dig it up. Yes. But uh, yeah, let us know in the comments below. And uh, until then... Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, my stuff. Great. Yeah. Need some gel. Oh.